In this video, we're building a YouTube comment printing machine. We'll start by assembling an off-the-shelf CyberDuck kit, then we'll use that device to fetch comments from this very video, take those comments, send them to AI to pluck out the nice ones, and then print them off on that device using its built-in printer. In other words, anything nice you say on this video is getting printed off in my office moments after you say it in the comments, and as a result, that comment will be immortalized in real life forever. So let's get into it. To build our comment printer, we're going to start with that cyber deck. Now, if you're not familiar, a cyber deck is kind of a general term. It comes from science fiction. These come in a lot of different form factors. Generally, they're homemade computers powered by a single board computer. Basically, the only devices sold that are these uh, flat kind of, you know, keyboard screen on the same plane devices are cyber decks. So that's what I'm calling this. But you can fight me in the comments about that definition. Anyway, we'll use that cyber deck to fetch data from YouTube to get the comment list. Then we'll take that comment list send it through an AI to filter out to get the really nice ones that I want to print out. Then it'll decide some of those go to the trash, some of them come back to the cyber deck, and those actually get printed through that built-in thermal printer. We'll repeat this whole loop on some regular cadence, run it every 10 minutes or something to fetch new comments, and that should be all we need to do. Also, I colored this because I bought markers, so I, I gotta color it. Now, like I said, this is an off-the-shelf kit. It's made by a company named Clockwork Pi. They make a few different devices that are all set up kind of like this. You get a box of parts, including the electronic components, and you can build your own little device out of it. This is their dev term kit, and it is the Raspberry Pi version that uses a compute module for its processor. But wait, it says this thing is an open source portable terminal. What even is a terminal? Well, to find out, we have to talk about the history of computers. The first computers were big, real big, room big, house big. Using them generally revolved around using switches or knobs. Over time, we moved to punch cards and then eventually keyboards once computers were powerful enough. Terminals were the way you interfaced with these giant machines. You would type in a command, it would print out a response. And I mean physically print out, like on paper, no screens involved. Just about no one had access to these machines. These men were forced to wear the same outfit to use this one. As soon as it was possible to do so, they ditched the paper and moved to cathode ray tube displays. Then, once computers were small enough, they just moved that processing that used to be on the server inside but kept that terminal form factor. The text-based part never really went away. Even computers like the Apple Lisa, which were all about their fancy user interfaces, they still had terminals built in. At this point, we saw a fork in the road. In software, we had terminal emulators or terminal windows, which controlled either the computer they were running on or a remote server and hardware terminals just became thin clients which are just low-end computers that connect to a server to do most of their work. Nowadays most computers can act as a terminal and most terminals are powerful enough that they have some operating system on them so the line of like what is a terminal is pretty blurry. Generally though if it's a consumer device marketed as a terminal it's a lower end device that's meant to be connected to a bigger computer for heavier work and that's exactly what we'll do today but we'll get to that after we build this thing. Cracking this bad boy open, we have some stickers that we can use once we're done building it. We have an optional heatsink that I don't understand, and a manual which, among other things, I assume explains the heatsink. The top layer of packaging has all our plastic parts, and the layer beneath that has all of our electronics. So to get building, let's get this out onto a table. Nice. This looks like a lot of parts, but it's really just a few big pieces we have to clip together. Taking a look at the manual, it says don't panic, I do not need the manual's permission to do that. And then after that, it's pretty much like Lego style graphical instructions, which look really nice. We'll just keep this on the side. Now let's clear some room and grab the baseboard, which is where all the electronics kind of mount to. The first thing that goes in is the screen, which just snaps in. The, the manual says to check the corners. I don't know what I'm checking, so I'm gonna assume they've, they've been checked. Next we have the main board, which normally fits the Clockwork Pi processor board, but this is a Raspberry Pi model, so it's just another adapter to a different socket type. And that can just snap down into the main board. Now this is a toolless build. It doesn't have nuts or bolts, but it has these uh, injection molded pressure fit kind of basers that hold everything together. I think these are actually really cool and speaks to the quality of the design of this. You just break them apart and then they just push down into place and they feel perfectly tight. Next up we have a ribbon cable to connect the screen to the main board. If you've never put in a ribbon cable, just so you know, you have to open up this little latch and then slide the cable in and then close the latch. Next, we'll install the brains of the build by taking a Raspberry Pi compute module, mounting it to that adapter board, and then clicking it in. However, I will say, if you're not used to working with compute modules, be very careful. This is one I broke by just being a little out of alignment. No, it doesn't matter. This is a cheap knockoff, which I mostly bought to have something to drop. Nice. Getting my money's worth. We'll just clip that in, and then we'll put that entire socket onto the main board. Now, in the instruction manual, it shows some screws, which are supposed to hold this in even sturdier, but this adapter board I don't think has those, so we're skipping that. 
After that, we'll plop in the Wi-Fi antenna and the speakers, and then we have this big extension board which has some I.O. and also connects the camera and the printer. Wait, this, this does not have a camera. That doesn't make any sense. I guess you can add a camera. The piece of plastic which holds the print head sure felt like it was going to break, but it didn't break, so I guess I felt wrong. And once that was in, I can just push this down onto some more of the pegs. Another ribbon cable, another peg, and then we can get our battery adapter in here. I realized at this point that I actually put the Wi-Fi antenna on the wrong side, so I flipped it to the other one, and now our battery base sits perfectly. This whole thing just flips around and mounts in the bottom of the case, and then the keyboard just pressure fits like everything else. Then we pop on the front of the case and we secure it with these unique kind of plastic bolts and it's done. It's all buttoned up. It was truly a toolless build. After that, we can plop in some batteries and then boot the whole thing up. Now, keep in mind, this is a Raspberry Pi in a fancy shell. So the Raspbian OS, the Raspberry Pi Linux is what it loads into. I won't cover that, but there are a few tweaks that are unique to the dev term and that's specifically the printer driver. The way the printer driver works is a bit unusual. It creates a temporary file in slash temp and any text you pipe into that just prints out in real life. You can also print out a test page, which is what I'm doing here. The quality of the print on the right side, I think is really good. On the left, you can see there's kind of these like streaky lines. That's from carbon buildup on the print head. I was able to clean that off after I filmed this, but I wanted to leave that there in case someone saw something similar on their printer, but it, it cleans off pretty easy. And there you go. With our dev term built and our printer working, we're ready to move on. If you take a look at our original plan, the vast majority of this actually is software. We need to interact with YouTube and we need to interact with an AI. Both of these can be done through what's called an API or an application programming interface. Similar to the relationship we talked about earlier where a terminal would talk to a mainframe to get its data, nowadays it's pretty common for devices to call out to web servers to get data. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. There are no set rules about how APIs are designed. So to figure out how to use YouTubes, we we have to go look up the YouTube API reference, read about it a little bit, then we have to go sign up with YouTube in a special way to get what's called an API credential, then we can take that credential and we can make a request to these like hidden API web pages that YouTube publishes. These API pages serve up data from YouTube in a machine readable way, that is formatted in a way that we can read from code. So we have to go make a request to this hidden page in a script, and then that script can parse out the comments that we need. I set up this script to number the comments and filter out any ones that are too short or too long, and then I can copy this over to ChatGPT and I can experiment with how to ask it to do what I want. I asked ChatGPT to give me the numbers of the comments which were friendly and nice, and it seemed to do a pretty good job with that. So then we start the process over again. We go look up the ChatGPT docs, we go get a ChatGPT API credential, we figure out how to make the request, and then we move that over into our script. We can make our final prompt by combining the question that we tested along with what would have been the output that gets printed out, the list of comments, and then we just sort through that. We print out the ones that we want to keep with a check mark, and the X's are the ones that for whatever reason didn't make the cut. Now, I want to be clear, every comment here is valuable, but a lot of them are personal anecdotes or stories or questions, things that don't really need to be, you know, immortal on paper. I really want the ones that are personal, people kind of talking to me, saying something that, you know, I want to preserve. So this is not a rating of like a good or bad comment. It's just like, is this a message to me? And if so, we want to print it out. Now that we're done tinkering with this, we can pull off that screen protector and get that ooh crispy screen. I also noticed, I think I lost the plastic power button at some point. I don't know if I ever actually installed it. Uh, hey, uh, Abe from the editing room here. Here it is, you fool. Uh, they actually even gave you two and you threw both of them out. So uh, enjoy living with no power button. I can turn it on with this little stick though. Once it's on, I added a cron job, which is just a timed job to run the script every 15 minutes. I went, I made some tweaks to the script, like the formatting of how it prints them out. I also added a makeshift database so it doesn't reprint old comments every time it runs. So we can see if I run it once, it prints out the nice comments from one of my older videos. And you can see this one, very nice, um, asking why my keyboard has no symbols. It's because using a keyboard with no symbols makes me feel like a man. Then you can see if we run the script again, it doesn't reprint those two comments, it just printed. And there we go, installed on my desk. Now it's gonna sit here until this roll of paper is empty. So feel free to say anything you'd like down below in the comments and be part of this project that is, you know, important to me. And uh, I appreciate y'all watching and I appreciate all the kind comments and I'm excited to have them uh, printed out and, and held in a way that I can keep for a long time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.